Hong Kong, China. People's Republic of China competing for the Paralympic title. And uh, this is how they got there. People's Republic of China, the winners over Poland and Hong Kong, China, the winners over Hungary to get to this final. So everybody really pumped. The audience, I can tell you, are up for anything. Amazing scenes. And it's an incredible atmosphere in here and everybody picking up on it. Zhao Zufeng of China, Rong Jin, and Xiao Jingjing. Some team, the Chinese team, I can tell you. And uh, the Hong Kong China team. We're just showing the route through. China. We have a smooth run into this final. Not losing a match yet. The team of Hong Kong were on the other side of the draw. We'll see their stats very shortly. Chan Yu Chong, Nia Justine, Teresa, and Yu Chu Yi. You can see they have been unbeaten as well. Victorious over Hungary in the semi-final. Very easy win over Poland. And still comfortable with that win. Over Poland and Brazil on the polls. So this is the final gold medal match, the final match of day four of fencing. In this Carioca Arena 3, we have been absolutely spoilt today with nail-biting matches. And this is look set to be a repeat of what we've had so far this the women's final in the fa team competition you up there chan yu chong but first it'll be her teammate yu chu yi that will take to the beast and face rong jing Well, there's a lot of pedigree on either side of these teams. Rong Jing, a 27-year-old, already has a gold medal from these Paralympics. And it was just one day ago that she picked up the gold in the foil. Eight World Championship medals. And she's going to be facing in her first fight, Yu Chu Yi has a silver medal in the individual foil. Now these two met only one day ago in the gold medal match in the individual event. So, however, that was obviously the foil for this CFA. So could things turn around? A smile from Rong Jing, looking relaxed ahead of what is going to be a very important match. Yeah, well, still drawing breath and we're very excited and looking forward to a great match here like you say can't be bad can it Paralympic gold medal match from foil and we've got it first up here in this team sabre match uh, so just setting the distance 
on the piste for the wheelchairs. Both fences ahead of the nine bouts that make up. Well, we know how important every point is, but uh, amazing how it unfolds as they go through the the nine uh, matches and it, it is incredible how the tactics change as you get further on through so this epi final just waiting to start everything looks set and all the equipment has been tested. Big smile as always from Rong Jin. Just making sure that the wheelchair is covered. Got anything above the waist? A tense start here to this gold medal match. Hong Kong against China. Now the referees are keeping a very close eye on any mistakes or any excessive movements. Just a little bit too much movement coming from the chair on the platform for wrong. The referee correcting that. So almost 30 seconds gone and no score. You can feel attention no athlete wanting to make a mistake but desperate to get a point on target yeah it tends to be the a category that come out of the chair more than the the b they have more movement in the upper part of the body oh look at that first point then to you see Point hasn't gone up yet. The referee looking into her pocket. And the yellow card has been handed to Rong of China. The point given to you. So the currently Hong Kong lead one point to zero. And this steady start very tentative from both of these fences they met in the gold medal match in the individual foil and now they're starting proceedings off in this team event you know, look at, at the movement in the chair there. You can see the range of movement that they have back and forth. Well, you lost the gold medal match in the individual foil event. She's leading two points to one over wrong at this stage. First to five in this bout. The only time these two fences will face each other. And yeah. the 
time allowed, three minutes, is soon disappearing. Neither wanting to make a mistake. But you now has a two points lead. Three to wrongs one. Along with the yellow card will be... Unusually steady, very tentative. Neither athlete wanting to give away a point to make a mistake. Defensive style fencing in the opening bout between Hong Kong and China. Into the a lot left to happen in this match but if no one reaches a score of five the score will just remain and it looks as though it's going to be the time that runs out before five is reached wrong wildly celebrating her second point but still one behind you 16 seconds remain in this first of nine bouts yeah, slow start, it really is, but they uh, look very nervous of each other out there and nobody, like you said, wants to make a mistake. Well, in Epe, you can afford to be defensive. No priority needed. It's very much a matter of whoever's point makes contact the other person's mask or body first will get the light and when it's simultaneous as we've seen already once in this bout then both athletes get awarded the point you leading three points to wrongs two into the final few seconds of this opening bout and wrong just having a glance at the clock and there, the time is up. And the very controlled and steady start. Nothing too dramatic in that opening bout. Not so often that we see the time running out on an open up. But only one point separating them. So very little that can be taken from an analysis point of view. Playing it safe and just getting those nerves out the way. Yeah, well, the second one is going to be up to 10, isn't it? So it means that the second bout they'll be chasing up to 10, unless the time runs out again. Chen Yu Chong of Hong Kong against Zhao Zufeng. way to go eight bouts left Chan Yu Chong on next for Hong Kong and she'll face Zhou Zhu Feng Zhou Zhu Feng the new reigning Paralympic champion in the individual FA up against the bronze medalist in the individual FA, so much class in this women's final. So many medals between these two teams. I was going to say, Chen Yu Chong, a former Paralympic champion as well in Beijing. So, like you say, so much. And look at that point straight away there to Zhao. Double point, one each. Well, on results, these teams are 
Both equally spectacular for their individual prowess. Also in their teams. The Chinese team. Were the world champions back in 2013. But the team of Hong Kong were world champions in 2010, 2011, and silver medalists from last year. So both of these nations have pedigree in the team event, and they've got vast amounts of pedigree in the individuals that are on the piece right now, and the two on the sideline for either team. Yeah, points being picked up there, a couple of doubles, and then a single there, so China just ahead. This is very, very close again, another double. Well, it's just nothing separating these two teams. In the early stages, China with a one point lead, just one point away from finishing this bout, the first to ten in bout number two. Well, China get there first. And they aren't quite the referee digging into his pocket. Nope, the hands are shaken. The score stands. Zhou Zhu Feng. Eight victories over Chan Yu Chong's five. Just giving China an early lead. Yeah, very happy about that. So China just ahead. Ten points to eight, but still a long, long way to go. Remember it, it's... 45 and now just in here. Next up, now Justine Teresa for Hong Kong. And Zhao Jingjing for the People's Republic of China. The first time we are seeing these two fences onto the piece, and then it'll be a change of order as every fencer must fence the other fencers in the opposing team. So, three bouts per fencer, a total of nine, on the way to a total score of 45. We're currently, after two bouts. China lead 10 points to 8 over Hong Kong. Zhao with a two point advantage. Eight. China very quick to extend that lead. Yeah, but now just comes straight back at her and she gets another point up there. Well, now a category A fencer up against China's category B fencer. And this is where the tactics of the order can really change things. So 9-11. China just in the lead. Can China 
to start to build on this. No, from Hong Kong. Doing her best to call back this small deficit that Hong Kong have. Two points to one in this individual bout. No, Justine Teresa. Over Zhao Jingjing. Well, the double there. So still one point in it. And we've seen this, haven't we? It's just been going to and fro, uh, the, the lead. But uh, really competitive every match. That's it. It's all even. And this is going to be another close final. So little dividing them as we reach the towards the end of the first third. It really does seem that each fencer reacts to a score from the other one. No team managing to open up any sort of margin at this stage. Well, real pressure points there from Shao. And she's happy about that. That was a double, but uh, it took her up to 15. So she's happy with that. Good for China. <laughs> a big sigh of relief there from her. Well, Xiao Jing Jing. Only getting five victories over Na Justine Charissa, but Zhao from the lower category. So that actually a significant moment in the match. Significant points secured and not giving up that lead. Yeah, she was happy about that, wasn't she? And China will be as well. Well, here the score really does reflect how close the matches are between these two teams. The matchup on paper, medals galore on either side in the individuals and in the teams. So now the fourth bout of nine, Rong Jing back on for her second bout. The gold medalist in the foil from these Paralympic Games up against Chan Yu Chong, category B fencer. We won a bronze in her FA competition. And China will be hoping to pick up points here against the B category fencer. But as we've seen all the way through these matches, it doesn't always work that way. China, just a one point advantage, but Chan straight away on the offensive. Trying to get a reaction out of wrong. Well, she does. But then he manages to make it a double touch. Trying to maintain their lead. Chan just the one pushing and she catches wrong as wrong comes forward with the attack. Lifted her hand a little too high and got caught by Chan and a double. Keeps it equal. 17 apiece. First to 20. Well, that was really, uh, really quick, wasn't it? It was like lightning, that. One point up, China. Another double. Well, the individual scores four apiece. But China started with a one point advantage. They still have it on the overall team score. Well, now we're at 19 apiece. One hit away from finishing this bout. First to 20. And it's China who will hand over in the lead. Rong Jing winning five points. Chan Yu Chong winning five. So the difference remains at one. China just leading. So China just, just ahead. Early days though. Four bouts. Now 
Jingjing category B fencer. Yu Chu Yi category A. Yu Chi Yi silver medalist on the individual foil. Zhao Jingjing gold medalist in the individual epee, silver medalist in individual foil in the category B. So both fencers have been in gold medal matches already at these Paralympic Games. Zhao victorious in hers. Can she be victorious again today? Well, like you said before the final, the quality in this final, absolutely amazing. Every matchup. Body wire plugged into the socket of the FA, and then the testing of the guards of the foil aprons and the floor. All equipment good to go. Salute the referee, the crowd, and each other. And then it is game face on. The masks come down, and all pleasantries go by the wayside. Well, this match so far has just remained so close. At the changeover, every time the most we've had is a two-point difference. And that was after the second bout. We're now into the fifth bout, and the score still separating these teams by just one. Yeah, and we know that if it goes to the wire, anything can happen in the last second. I've seen this a couple of times that have a, a little bit of a problem with the wires, the back of the chair, and especially when they're using the, the chair and they're moving a lot in the chair to try and get purchase, and they sometimes just land on that connection. One apiece, you now makes it two to one on the individual score. But that brings it to 21 all for the overall team score. Hong Kong against China. Hello. Three one up over Zhao. Zhao, category below in the individual competitions. That may be starting to show ever so slightly. Zhu Chu Yi just keeping her point out of striking range. Trying to coax Zhao forwards in her chair. Warning has been given, but it's not stopping you for the first time, for the second time this match. We've got a two point difference yeah. between these two teams. Still so close. 4 1, you over Zhao. Well, it's almost like she's saying, Okay, you give me the card, and this is my response. And uh, two quick points there. Takes uh, Hong Kong. Three points ahead. Now it's just two points. Now the first to 25 to finish this bout. Yu Chu Yi just one point away from doing that. Zhao still needing three if she's going to put China back in the lead. Out coming forward with the attack, but you counter attacking and putting Hong Kong in front of China for the first time since the opener. 
And it was Yu Chu Yi who gave the advantage to her team in the first bout. And now she brings it back again. Yeah, very precise there, wasn't she? Everything that she did was precise. And so just ahead then, Hong Kong, China, 25 points. China, 22. Now, Justine Chirissa for Hong Kong up against Zhu Zhu Feng of China. Now, 25-year-old from Hong Kong up against... Zhu from the People's Republic of China. Zhu, the new Paralympic champion in Category A, women's EPE. Now the bronze medalist at World Championships last year. The salutes are carried out. And now the bout will begin. Hong Kong leading by three points in this sixth bout, but not for long. Zhu showing her class as Paralympic champion straight away. Two points to zero. Zhu over Na. Yeah, this is up to 30, so gives her chance now to come back. And an even there, yeah, well, there it is. 25-25 and now on the way to 30. Well, this wow. match, quite a different tempo to what we've seen so far. And Zhu just showing her class in this bout. Yeah, how aggressive is she? So aggressive, she really is. And now... 27, just three points away. And this, so accurate, isn't she? This is incredible fencing from Zhu, Zhu Feng. She is just racking up those points. Seven points to Nas zero in just over 20 seconds. Yeah, absolutely amazing. I mean, she really is a lady on form. One point back. From Nah, that's the first point that she's got against her. But that's it. That's taken them up to 30, and China are now four points in the lead. Well, that just turned around ever so quickly. Eight points to one. Zhu Zhu Feng, the individual champion over Nah, Justine Chirissa, showing such class, such speed, such aggression. And accuracy as well, wasn't it? It was just absolutely spot on. Coordination, everything was there. Oh, what a turnaround that bout has had on the overall standings. China now lead 30 to 26, having trailed by three uh, before the previous bout. Chan Yu Chong of Hong Kong will be looking to turn that around. She faces Zhao Jingjing, a Category B fencer, but Zhao has already held her own against the Category A fencers. In the earlier one, a rally matchup from Hong Kong. Chan Yu Chong looking ever so relaxed. The bronze medalist from the individual. Both Category B, so. For these two athletes, the final bout that they will take part in in this team event. After that, they'll just have to wait and see what their teammates can do. Yeah, which is what we've seen, isn't it? All the way through and like you said, halfway through one of the finals, uh, well, the men's final, just uh, a lot of the competitors couldn't even watch. We couldn't even watch. It was just uh, 
so exciting and it was absolutely to the wire. A look of concentration as the tension really mounts towards the latter stages. Just a mini equipment malfunction when the tip touches the guard on the opponent's epi. The light shouldn't come on. Chan just asking for a change of epi. No, just asking for a coach to help with the testing. Well, that means it wasn't the epi. Process of elimination now. I think it well. could be the body wire. The Chan just waiting for her replacement. Yeah, they know exactly what they want. Of course they do, uh, because it's so essential that it works correctly. And got her own wire there. With good connection. And one that she feels confident with. Every time we've seen any of the fences testing their equipment or setting up the wheelchair or any part of the equipment uh, they know exactly what they want what feels comfortable so it wasn't the wire so it's process of elimination This just adding to the tension. The final bout for these two fences, and that will be followed by just two more bouts by their teammates before the new Paralympic champions in the team event are decided. It looks as though it could be the equipment of the competition, the ground lead being swapped over now. So nothing to do with Chan's equipment. If it was, then you get given a yellow card and have the chance to change that piece of equipment. And then if the next piece fails, it results in a point deducted. That doesn't seem to be the issue here. And all equipment by these athletes will be triple checked. You do not want to be Giving away points, so they're just checking her body wire for a faulty connection. So they still haven't quite sussed out where the issue is coming from. Testing all possible options, but that won't be concerning Zhao. She'll be keeping calm on the other side of the piece, just waiting this bout to continue. The spare epi is collected by the coaching staff for Chan. No, it looks as though Zhao is using this moment. No, they're checking absolutely everything. Just trying to determine where the fault is. Well, it's not ideal for the last match of this session. In Karaoke Arena, the crowd waiting patiently in the background. They have been treated to some exciting matches, or very exciting matches, in this session, and they're not going to just walk out now at such a crucial stage in this gold medal match. Well, the scores stand at the moment as China leading with 30 points over Hong Kong. They have a score of 26. All will be decided by the time we reach 45 points 
five per bout. Three bouts left. And the first team to 45 will become new Paralympic champions. The team of China saw their teammates in the men's event get so agonizingly close well, to another gold medal. Yeah, they, they couldn't believe it, could just they? just stole it in the last couple of seconds. It was one of the most amazing things. It really was. I think they were shocked. The French were shocked. But that's, um, that's sport at this level. Anything can happen. And <laughs> often in team matches, it does. So many varying factors. But one of the factors that will not be left to be varying is the equipment that will be tested incredibly thoroughly and that's why before every match the testing protocol takes place and the, each opponent will test their epee against the foil skirts and the guards of their opponents those two areas are off target so to speak they'll also test that the tip is working well, this is a, an absolute shame, isn't it? Because these athletes are out there now and the momentum of the match. Well, just <laughs> look at that. Chan Yu Chong. A little wave to the crowd. Well, it's very important not to waste any energy in these moments you can see the other next two athletes are ready to go as well now justine Teresa and rong jing on the piece just in the distance they'll be wondering what the delay is all about as i'm sure are many of the crowd it looks as though the official timekeepers not quite got to the bottom of where the problem's coming from. This can often be the problem with electric fencing. So many different variables with where the problem's coming from. There's a tip in the epee, there's a socket inside the guard of the epee, then there's the body wire that plugs into that socket that goes down the arm of the fencer comes out the back of their jacket, plugs it, plugs into a spool, and then the spool into the ground lead. The ground lead will then plug into the electronic box where the lights light up. And that happens all again on the other side. So, so plenty, plenty that can go wrong. But it looks as though they've got to the bottom of it, and we are now back in action in the seventh bout of nine. This the final bout for these two fencers. Chan from Hong Kong on the left hand side. Zhao, the People's Republic of China on the right. And they're going up to 35, remember. Well, that double will be to China's advantage with the scoreline as it is. China now. Oh, just stole that, didn't she? Yeah. 32 to 27. So, two points to Chan's one. Increasing that lead that she started with for China. And this really is such a crucial point. It's the fences are all now evenly matched per category. We're not going to see any more dramatic changes, or not expect any more dramatic changes, I should say. Nothing dramatic happening at the moment. But China just creeping further ahead. Zhao, four points to Chan's two. China, 34 points to Hong Kong's 28. But Chan keeping Hong Kong in reach of that gold medal. 
stick on top of the wrist by Chan. Four apiece for these two in their final bout of the session, the final bout of this team competition. Chan now five points to Zhao's four, putting China within three, with Hong Kong within three, but it's rounded up with a double touch. Salute to the crowd and Zhao will take that because she will hand over to her teammates with the lead. Chan brought back the deficit by one, but not enough to put Hong Kong in the lead. Yeah, so it makes the last two matches very, very important, doesn't it? Now, 10 points to win the title. Well, 10 points for China, that is. And 13 points for Hong Kong, China. But so anything possible. The penultimate bout, bout number eight. Na Justine Charissa for Hong Kong. Rong Jing for the People's Republic of China. They will start to feel the pressure build. It's China who have led for the last two bouts. Rong Jing will come into this match, into this bout with a three point lead over Na. Checking of the equipment. Salutes complete. And now we're getting so close to the deciding few points in this match. The next to 40 will conclude this bout. And it looks as though wrong is setting off as she means to go on, increasing that advantage she started with. Yeah, so aggressive. She really is into the attack immediately. And picks up another point there. 37. It's a five point differential. Just three away from concluding this bout. And if she can get the next three hits on, it'll be some significant vantage that she'll hand over into the final bout. Na not giving up easily here. Just one point less than Rong scored so far, but Rong retaliating very quickly, giving China the five point overall lead. Two away from this penultimate bout being complete. Look at the range of movement in the chair. No. Doing her best to defend these quick attacks from Rong. But Rong just too fast, too accurate. Defensive from Hong Kong. And there she does again, picks her up on the wrist. And suddenly, this looks like it could be China's to lose. Rong Jing, so convincing there with that 5-1 win over Na Justine Charissa. A lovely hit over the top of the blade onto the shoulder. I think it's just the speed as well, as well as the accuracy, isn't it? Right the way in, and then look at it. <laughs> and it's the same celebration, brilliant stuff from Rong Jing. But all of a sudden, at such a crucial stage, it is an actual significant lead for China. Zhou Zhufeng, the final athlete to fence for China. Yu Chu Yi, the final fencer on the piece for Hong Kong. Now you would start to think that China have got this, but we might have thought that in the men's match and they lost it at the in the final few seconds at this margin really will give the reigning Paralympic champion 
from just two days ago some confidence she has a seven point lead and only needs to get five points to bring the gold medal back for China. What can Yu Chu Yi do in this situation? It's certainly quite a challenge for Hong Kong, but I'm sure one that they will relish and it's a fighting sport and these athletes will fight until the end. Yeah, well the best to last. Zhou Zhu Feng, she knows what she's got to do. She had a little look up at the ceiling there and as if to say, okay, this is it. So here they go, five points. Zhao needs to win this for China. Hong Kong trail by seven, but it's a very early point for you. And that was a result of a mistake by Zhu coming in with the attack and being caught by you. Great defensive action from Hong Kong. Zhu can afford a couple of mistakes. And there, she now is just four away from another chance to stand on top of the podium and sing the national anthem of the People's Republic of China. But she won't be thinking about that right now. It's about getting hits on her opponent. A double touch is all that China will need. Hong Kong cannot afford double touches at this stage. No, absolutely, double point. Well, she could go all double points now and China will win. So it's currently two apiece on the individual bout, but that is not what matters right now. It's the first team to 45 points that will be crowned Paralympic champions in the women's FA event. Zhu already a gold medal in the individual and she's getting ever closer to adding another title to her name. Yeah, what an amazing championship she will have had. She's one away. And She's look very at this. close. <laughs> Surely China have this. Zhu Zhu Feng. She won the gold medal for China in the individual epee. She is the reigning world cha world champion in the individual epee. And now she just needs one more hit to make her the Paralympic champion in the women's team event. So close for China. Hong Kong with some considerable work to do. It's a big ask. Two minutes 30 remain. Hong Kong, Hong Kong would need 10 points in a row without any double touches. And that would mean for Zhu to not get a single touch in 10. That is Mountain hard to, climb. to It's <laughs> Nothing is impossible in sport. Well, I think they're trying but anybody to decide watching would think. They're, they're trying to decide whether that, that was a point, are they? No. No, the, the red light came on after the referee had called halt. So no point. It was just referee calling halt to check the equipment. Nothing left to risk at this moment. So close for China. Hong Kong with some considerable work to do. And the clock against the team of Hong Kong as well. You will be aware of that, but she won't want to make a mistake because it's oh. going to be China who wrap it up. Zhu Zhu Feng brings it home and China take the gold medal, the Paralympic title and the women's team FA. Zhu Zhu Feng, five points to Yu Chu Yi's two, but it's the overall score that counts. China win by what turned out to be a considerable margin of 10 points. And it was so close only a couple of bouts ago. It was very, very close all the way. And then they just started to uh, pile up the points, didn't they? And what a brilliant performance there from this Chinese women's team.
Well, it could have been, but it, it isn't. Two goals for China. It was very, very close for the men, but the women have done it. And that was an amazing performance. It was an amazing team. And congratulations all the way around. Well, it is. Congratulations from the team of Hong Kong to the victorious team of China. Handshakes between athletes, coaches, and referees. But hugs between the three victorious fencers from the People's Republic of China. Rong Jing, Zhu Zhufeng, and Zhao Jingjing add another medal to their incredible collection. All three of them already had individual gold medals from this Paralympic Games. And now all three of them will stand, will be on top of the podium, side by side, as they collect another goal.